Hi Indy, Harika and Monica, welcome to the session. So we'll get started. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Okay, yeah, most of them are my you know, old students only. Okay, so they may go through the video later. We'll proceed with you hmm? because you are the new actually. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, hi, Badri. Thank you for joining. Okay, so today's session will be Snowflake, okay, a demo on the Snowflake. So I would like to know if you, any of you have any idea on Snowflake, can one by one uh, let me know, like, I mean, if you have some idea, just say some whatever you know, or if you don't know, just say, um, yeah. Yeah, tell me more. No, no idea. Okay. Yeah, Harika? I have completely no idea. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, then that's good actually. Or especially, you know, if some working employees, then they might have some idea. Okay, so and the two, if they are working in data warehousing or data analytics or cloud, then they will have some idea. Others, they may not have any idea. Okay, so that's not a problem. Okay, so today's session, uh, we will discuss the most frequent questions. Okay, uh, which a newcomer is supposed to know. Okay, like I did I share my screen? No, right? No. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? I have shared, okay, Snowflake training notes and a few questions like Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is snowflake okay why should we learn snowflake what is required to get job in snowflake or what are the prerequisites to get job in snowflake and what type of jobs we get with snowflake and uh, you know how the salary range will be and how our future will be with snowflake and uh, the last question how is the career with snowflake Okay, so these are the things I will address apart from whatever I'm going to cover. For example, the course contents, whatever we are going to cover and a brief introduction. Okay, something about Snowflake. Just to give you an idea. Okay, so what is Snowflake? Okay, like as you don't know, you, you are suggested by some of your friends that, uh, you know, try to learn Snowflake. Or they must have suggested, go to Krishna, that's it. You know, your life will be settled. I mean, because you both came through referral only. So, they must have already told you. Okay, just go to him, that's it. Yeah, you can also go to my YouTube channel, Redshift Krishna. You can type in Google Redshift Krishna, you will get my first links. Okay, my, I mean, previous batches, students, interviews, everything. If you just type in Redship Krishna, you will get my channel. You can subscribe there also because I'm going to upload all these videos there itself. Even the demo and the classes one, two, three, four, whatever obsessions I will be uploading. You can repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly view. In fact, all my old students uh, see the videos uh monthly 100 hours they just see the videos repeatedly okay whatever we covered some important concepts like you know performance tuning workload management okay or some sql related sessions or some interviews those things so you can also do the same i hope both of you have my channel right channel link Arika and 
Monica? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Okay, now uh, because somebody told you, okay, go and learn Snowflake. So let me tell what is this Snowflake. Okay, Snowflake is a cloud data warehouse. Okay. Even before going to that, let me tell about my introduction. I am a data warehouse specialist or data warehouse specialist or solution architect. Okay. So, actually, it's not that uh, I started my career with cloud. No. I was working on Teradata. Okay. So I started my career in 2008, okay, means it's almost 15 years, okay. And Teradata, what then, what is this Teradata? It's also a data warehouse, see, it's also a data warehouse. Oh, that means I have already worked on on-premises data warehouse, so it was easy for me to switch to the cloud data warehouse. Very simple. That means I basically just need to know what is, you know, Snowflake or what is Redshift, that's it get switched to there. I no need to learn anything. In fact, whatever I learned some 15 years ago, I am doing the same thing. So I don't have to struggle too much to learn anything. Even, even tomorrow some other cloud will come or something else will come. But this data warehouse will be there. Okay. So your job will be more easy or you can say that, you know, life will be more relax or work life balance will be more once you learn few things what are those few things you just need to know you know sql part only okay sql part if you know you are the master very very simple okay that sql also i'll cover no worries okay so if you know sql that's it you are done for your rest of your life in it okay so when i was working uh, with Teradata, yeah, uh, there itself I mastered a SQL, SQL part. Means SQL means, you know, basic SQLs will be there, DDLs, DMLs, joins, those things. And if you are master that, whether you learn Redshift or whether you learn Snowflake, whether you learn BigQuery, whatever it is, you will excel there. So, first 10 years I worked on Teradata and then I, I found that, you know, everyone is moving from on-premises to cloud. Now you see everything is cloud, even mobile apps, everything is moving to cloud. So definitely the on-premises database is also moving to cloud. So that's where I realized that I should also move to cloud. Okay. And uh, I started my career with, you know, Redshift. Redshift is a AWS cloud actually. AWS Amazon Web Services is there, right? So AWS cloud. And then once I mastered that, I switched to Snowflake. And then I learned to even BigQuery also. In fact, right now I am working on BigQuery also. Okay. Because first of all, the, what are what are all these things? I told you three terms now. Okay. One is Redshift. Other one is Snowflake. And other one is BigQuery. I told you three things. Okay, and uh, before that, I told you Teradata. So, I introduced you four terms. So, what is this Teradata? This is a on prem, on prem means on premises, on premises data warehouse. Then, on premises means within your premises or within your office. These are all cloud data warehouses. So very simple, earlier companies used to have their own data servers within their office. Okay. Now what they did is, oh, means if they have their own data servers within their office means what they have to rent a house, I mean rent a like, you know, commercial office space, they have to set up their own LAN, WAN, they have to hire their own network engineer system admins, they have to install their softwares and they have to upgrade their you know, uh, version, patches, everything. So that all, and also once the storage is complete, they have to plan for the storage upgrade. All these are the issues with the basically on-premises. So 
so everyone is shifting to for example there are projects migrating redshift to you know teradata to redshift teradata to snowflake teradata to bigquery you know means on premises to different different cloud whether the companies may go to redshift companies may go to snowflake and companies may go to bigquery but everything is in cloud so then i will tell you i mean in fact this is one of the entry question also like you know do you know any of the other clouds like redshift or bigquery that's why i'm introducing these terms you should say yes i know redshift is a aws cloud it's a aws provided you know software or cloud snowflake is provided by snowflake snowflake is one company okay like teradata is one company snowflake also another company and bigquery bigquery is also provided by google it's a google cloud it is of course there is another cloud that is azure 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 is a microsoft provided cloud so all these leaders okay these are all very big companies right so they invented their own clouds so what they do they maintain the servers we just use it and pay for whatever we use like for example our uh, post paid or prepaid generally they operate in post paid means we will use the service first and then we will pay okay we don't need to pay in front so of course aws redshift of course they started you know before than any other clouds then after seeing aws the google and microsoft started their own cloud okay okay but snowflake this is very small company okay snowflake is very small company but it became famous you see aws google microsoft these are all very big gains right but snowflake although very small it's actually startup actually but it became competitor for all these things okay and it became in fact the world leader in this no in the cloud area these are all these are all what cloud data warehouses okay it became world leader so snowflake has become that much famous i will tell you why okay why it became okay like how a startup can become such a big competitor for these big gains and how it operates all those things we will learn actually okay so for now two inputs you should be learning a uh, snowflake is a cloud data warehouse okay it's a cloud data warehouse it's not on premises okay and what are its competitors like aws redshift okay and google bigquery and microsoft azure so what are these things these are also cloud data warehouses okay so then what are the on premises data warehouses okay on premises data warehouse i already told you teradata is one okay oracle microsoft sql server ms sql so these are all different different okay on premises data warehouses so now everyone is migrating to cloud so either whether you are using oracle teradata ms sql or whatever the database you are using you have to move to either redshift or snowflake or bigquery or azure okay azure in azure they call synapse analytics this is the name of the data warehouse okay synapse is the name of the data warehouse like bigquery google data warehouse snowflake is the snowflake redshift is the aws data warehouse cloud data warehouse okay so that means for a business to operate for example any actually for, right now you should know two things so you are saying you know it's a on premises data warehouse or cloud data warehouse first of all we don't know what is data warehouse okay so what is that first of all we don't know this actually then how can we understand cloud data warehouse okay so first of all data warehouse means in fact in fact i will cover everything in my session or in my videos i already told about what is data warehouse with the redshift sessions 
data warehouse means it's a place where huge volumes of data is stored that means it's like in normal term for example if you buy any washing machine or refrigerator you go to shop but there you will see one one piece but where from he will deliver to you the goods from the godown right godown so he will say that sir our item will be dispatched from the godown in case of items they call godown okay in case of in fact if you see uh, for example civil supply rice and all they will give right for the poor people the quota they call in villages quota rice all they store they also they call godown or warehouse so the place where huge volumes of data is stored is called warehouse similarly since here data is stored so it is called data warehouse why it is called data warehouse since it stores huge volumes of data so it is called data warehouse every company you take any bank or telecommunication company like or any bank use for even employees they also maintain our history right when an employee joined okay till how long he worked there and uh, what period to what period he was like a system engineer then what is his if you get any promotion they will show everything is designation dates salaries everything similarly banks also they maintain okay when the account opened okay he has any fixed deposits loans everything they will maintain in fact the insurance companies means they have to store for another 20 years 30 years because insurance will generally last for 15 20 years 30 years so and why, okay then the question why do companies you know maintain that history because using that history they can come up with you know business ideas to improve their business they can plan okay we which which branches of the banks are doing good or which banks are not doing good which banks are attracting more deposits which banks are attracting more loans so accordingly they can give some promotions to their customers or which banks or which branches of the banks are not doing good means they are not generating any deposits any loans so they can focus there to improve that branch for example if you see some supermarkets supermarkets also if you see reliance mart or anything uh there will be many branches so sometimes we see some supermarkets are closed in that area because they understood that you know there is not much business there okay it's maintaining their you know it's like cost right there is no business but they have to pay their rents and employees so they will see for maybe some time they will try to improve their business there if that is not going to work they will just close that particular outlet so how can they know because they are maintaining the history day to day transactions monthly transactions quarterly transactions quarterly loss and profit profit and loss and yearly they will see so and they will take measures how to improve if that's not going out i mean they will bear till certain extent after that they will close that means that is also one of the business decision okay whether we should proceed with this or stop it so every company need a data warehouse that is my point every company need to maintain their history data so that is called actually data warehouse okay earlier it used to be done online or i mean on premises means within their premises now it became cloud so data warehouse will be there whether it's on premises or cloud okay since i was already working on on premises so now i can easily switch the cloud so now you people who are newly starting you don't have to worry about on premises okay you just directly learn the cloud data warehouse that's it you can easily get in okay and then what is required what is required to get into a cloud career what you need is you just need some sql okay and basic how this particular you know snowflake box how this snowflake box how is its architecture all these questions will be asked okay so which we are going to cover actually okay then why should we learn snowflake why should we learn snowflake uh, okay i will tell you why should we learn anything okay it should be able to fetch the job fast number 1 okay and uh, it should fetch the job fast to 
to life should be you know salary should be i mean definitely more compared to other and uh, you know work life balance or uh, work life balance or you know cool career or life balance should be there okay otherwise you know you should not be too much addict yeah it should pay the job faster salary should be more or work life balance and long term career i mean what else we need right so i mean actually i and i mean i like these features okay life should be cool okay we should not be too much hectic and we should get very good attractive packages okay of course that is definitely the more criteria and you know we should be able to get the job okay there should be a lot of you know companies hiring then only we'll get demand right i have always maintained four five offers obviously once you have some for example 15 lakhs offer next lakhs next offer should be around 18 or something which is definitely more than the current offer so like that we will be thinking so everything is possible in this snowflake okay and another thing we it should not be more hectic okay our job should not be more hectic okay and this is the easiest job we can get just by knowing sql only sql was it may be on premises or cloud if you know sql okay that's it your job is done in fact in fact um, this subhash came only for sql training subhash and his wife okay came only for sql training sessions and uh, yeah and like that many people even working people comes to me only for sql session that's why if you see my youtube channel i put more videos on sql after seeing the people coming okay deep dive sessions on sql 1 2 3 4 like that advanced sql i put it especially for working employees okay only thing you need uh, to know is sql yeah tell me a uh, krishna yeah so this is vani like i have one query like a generic query yeah. so like i mean uh, you mentioned that uh, it's only dependent on sql right uh, and we need uh, we don't need much skills required because in that case like if you go to the market and if you are looking for another job anything so there will be i mean competition will be more right to get that uh, because if it's easy more people will learn and the competition will be more so how i mean how i i that question arises how that we yeah first of all people don't know that sql is the key Hello. for these technologies okay i mean now i told you so you are saying okay that is number 1 and uh, number 2 people don't know sql Hello? also okay they know that sql means writing queries <laughs> but they are not able to answer them right even i know you are also very poor in sql okay so with whatever basic sql no you know you are actually proceeding okay so actually people don't know that also right that's why if you go to any interview they will ask sql queries hmm. okay yeah, hmm. yeah you know right okay. so yeah and not everybody is able to answer them right that is the thing easy yeah. okay easy provided you are good in that yeah if you are not good in that that's not easy right yeah yeah so how yeah, to yeah, i good? understand that yeah but yeah that's yeah. what i'm telling not everyone is good in sql that is my point to answer your question competition will be more okay. but hmm. more you see don't afraid of you know people i mean who is coming for entry then why you see every position is taking minimum 50 entries to fill just one position why yeah, yeah. It, it's not only about the people uh, so it's also about the current market also that i am uh, so i see that many less open i mean less openings outside uh, yeah like if you want to upskill or something uh, if we do yeah. upskill on snowflake yeah yeah you see oh, i mean back yeah that is one of the reason companies will always see uh, do you know you know one or two clouds okay that's why i'm just introducing all these things in fact i'll give more on okay. you know how to prepare for interview once the session is completed yeah we should say that you okay. know i know red shape i know snowflake okay but we should be master yeah, in yeah. one thing yeah. okay we should be master in one yes. thing okay because that is our primary yeah. skill set 
okay for example okay. you are working on you know okay. tableau but when he ask you know are you do you know power bi then you will say you have to say yes i know yes sir no yeah yeah i am going to say yes yeah 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 you, yes sir i'll say yeah so definitely okay idea yeah, those are all the you know tips and tricks of how to crack the interview in fact uh, okay. the how the interview also looks is if you just say i know only snowflake i mean why should he take okay. he take you yeah. if you know only you know, snowflake whereas the other person coming yeah. both snowflake and redshift whereas the other person coming yes. with both snowflake and big query yeah. obviously they will see right yeah that's uh, what pers- yeah yeah that's why mm-hmm. you see in it the more yeah. you learn i mean definitely people will be after you that's why in fact uh, as an experienced yeah, yeah. candidate that's what i suggest you should learn yeah. as much as possible yeah, we might, while having yeah one primary skill set while having one primary skill set okay. should be very much essential because on that only we will be you know giving the interviews apart from that you should have okay. you know secondary skills in fact while doing job also uh, we will be touching the even for example source systems we will work with multiple sources you know or postgres mysql mm-hmm. you know different different source systems we will work mm-hmm. and especially while working yeah. in uh, snowflake also it's snowflake also you know it's not alone i will tell you snowflake is hosted on is aws platform or google platform or azure platform i will tell you that okay. when we start the snowflake training okay, okay. snowflake as okay. i already said snowflake it is not a big company right i told you but yeah snowflake yeah. is startup it uses the aws infrastructure or google infrastructure hmm. or microsoft infrastructure that means i will tell you hmm. what is infrastructure i mean for the new people i will tell you okay infrastructure means you do, it it is you don't have that much money to have its own data centers for to have data centers you should have your own place across the world right to maintain your own data center so since you don't have but aws google microsoft yeah. they provide their own data center so it uses their own data centers and it became famous okay so yeah i will okay. tell you that's why yeah. they will ask yeah. uh, you worked with snowflake on which platform or which infrastructure so that also i will tell you okay i yeah. mean you can say i work with snowflake on aws environment or i work with snowflake okay. on azure environment like that we should tell yeah that things will come you know no. once we get started you know session so and then okay. for, for preparing interviews that i will tell yeah uh, one whatever okay. you said is right in fact to answer i mean in just short when i say good in sql for example you should not say i know only 6 out of uh, you know 10 or 7 out of 10 you should be extremely hmm. good generally for uh, yeah. how do how do we introduce for example i am also panel how do we identify a fake a fake candidate with the working candidate only way he is by you know asking him to write a query Yeah, by giving the real time scenarios yeah 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 because theory everybody will answer even you see if you yeah. go to any trainer they also will tell right uh, scenarios yeah. yeah like you said scenario everybody even every real time employee even you also will tell right how in how yeah. what is the environment looks like but when coming to the yeah. when coming to the queries even you see even i even i as i am trainer right but even i go to it in trainings okay and okay. many trainers told me they are not that much good in sql mm-hmm. okay okay of course for uh, teaching to a person who don't know anything they are good maybe they can cover concepts and all but when coming to the yeah. actual sql they are also not good mm-hmm. they just uh, i mean frankly mm-hmm. agreed with me okay mm-hmm. yeah so um, sql is such a key that's why even yeah. when i go to interview they asked me to write queries that means if i write the query i will be through if i don't write that's it i'm out even i'll tell okay. you one one interview that happened some 10 years ago this is my personal experience 10 years ago means i was trying with some 3 4 years experience so some i think that is a pro interview yeah so interview started morning maybe uh, 8 or 
and you know many people gave interview my time it became around some 2 or 2 uh, o'clock okay afternoon so it was lunch time so everyone in a rush to go so then i in fact i have been waiting right so he took me he asked me only one question only one question can you write a question to delete the duplicates i just wrote i just wrote the query that's it i'm through he did not ask me okay. he did not spend even 30 minutes or even 20 minutes because that is the way we identify whether he is a you know really stuck candidate or mm -hmm. not Okay. He was asking that question everybody along with uh, because he was spending some 30 minutes, 40 minutes with everyone. Initially, generally, everyone will yeah. give that much time. Okay, but yeah. anyone who answered this question, he is just through him. Otherwise, he is not just making them through. But when it okay. became lunchtime, he was also rushed to go. And uh, of course, I have been waiting. Asked only one question and I just answered it. That's it. I am through for the next round. Okay. okay. In okay. this way, we will find out whether he is a worthy candidate or not okay that's why i am emphasizing the you know the sql part yeah yeah so thank you, krishna please go ahead yeah. yeah so next one in fact uh, while giving interview also if two candidate were entering one person is not good in sql they don't select him i mean i know i am the panel Okay, we always give priority to the person who is very good in SQL because all of these jobs are related to with SQL data warehouse, right? So these are to do with SQL. So SQL should be, we should be very good. Okay, yeah, the next question. Yeah, this question you understood, right? Why should we learn Snowflake? Yeah, we will easily get the job because there is not many people. Yes. You see, if you take Java, there are many people. If you know, you know, Java in other programming, there are many people. But only very few people know about data warehouse actually. So since market is there, but candidates are less, so you can easily get the job and salary should be definitely high. Okay, and work-life balance, as I said, SQL, if you know, you will actually enjoy your life like anything. You know, if you know SQL. Then yeah, career, you don't have to worry about it. In fact, I'm living on data warehousing from last 15 years. It may be on-premises or cloud, doesn't matter. The work we do is always same. So next, what is required to get the job in Snowflake? Yeah, what is required? I have already answered. We should be very good in SQL. That is the main, apart from that, whatever you know, that's added advantage. Okay. If you know, uh, for example, programming, super, you're most welcome. You know, other data warehouse like Redshift or BigQuery, super. If you know Python or Spark, super. Okay. But since you are working on Snowflake, so you must know SQL. Apart from that, whatever we add, it's an added advantage. Okay. In fact, after the course, before preparing for entry, I will tell, for example, how to introduce ourselves. Certain things we should say that I know. In fact, we will study about them also to make him know that we know them. Okay, yeah, we should be knowing certain other things. You see, only with rice we cannot eat, right? Food. We need some curry, some rasam or sambar. And apart from that, whatever additional things like some fruit, banana or some sweet, whatever it is, some additional curry or chapati, anything is welcome. So like this, okay? So, so prerequisite is a skill, okay? And a data warehouse basics. Anyway, that we will cover, okay, for the new people. Okay, then next and most important, what type of jobs we get with Snowflake and salary ranges and future, how it will be. Yeah, so jobs, what we get is, here we have both developer, okay, DBA, of course, solution architect, all the jobs we get, okay. But generally, you people, if you try with some, okay, some two years, three years, four years, five years, up to seven years, you will be either developer. Nowadays, it is called, you know, data engineer. I mean, same, both, okay. Or senior developer or senior consultant. Or like that, or snowflake developer, actually. Developer means snowflake developer. So, 
or let's say you want to directly go with dba then it will be a snowflake dba snowflake dba so because that is the advantage with the database actually okay you want to you have option to become a developer or you have to option to become db and once you master both development and db activities you can go yourself as a solution architect okay solution architect is the one it because he already did some development projects right so he knows for example some new client comes he knows how to you know design how to migrate data from you know sources to targets what services to use how to write sql how to fix data issues i mean generally he is an experienced right so he must be knowing okay but anyway uh, to this to become you you must at least work some 5 to 6 years or at least 6 years on hardcore development and dba okay so right now we will get developer db of course sometimes you will get data analyst roles also even data analyst analyst or even business analyst for this also you need you know sql for anything you need sql because we are doing with sql okay they will do how how do they analyze the data using sql queries only so sql is so so important for our roles of course dba actually very easy role actually in fact i love dba actually i settled in dba and working from last 12 years i am working from home actually nobody asks me okay i mean people started working from home only from last some 3 years after covid but i was working from last 12 years working from home because i was an expert db actually okay db means i will give 24 by 7 support i will just you know fix the issue just in 2 minutes that's it nobody will bother what i do where i do okay so actually that is the life to enjoy actually db but for that you should be very good in sql and all that's what i'm telling okay you should be knowing you should have strong knowledge that's it then you can enjoy your life and what is the strong knowledge sql okay basic sql you should know so of course solution architect uh, you will know as you work you know how to work with how to fix the performance issues all this stuff okay uh, for example some tableau you see in bi bi means reporting tools some tab after we build data warehouse okay people will connect to the data warehouse to run their reports so some reporting queries will run slow okay or they run longer or system will be slow so how do you troubleshoot so those are the things will be you know taken care by the solution architect you know how to improve performance how to reduce the cost to the customer so all those things actually solution architects will be involved then how is the career with snowflake okay career with snowflake is as i already said how do you feel i feel awesome awesome means awesome means super okay because what we need we need work life balance should be there and we need very good salary and we should have you know long term career what else you want so that's why i was you know settled in fact i'll tell you actually i am a beta computer science actually okay csc but i am very poor in sql i mean poor in coding okay so then uh, somebody told okay database will be very good option for you if you are not good in then immediately i mastered in sql that's it i am enjoying my life sql is not coding okay don't worry it is just you know basic sql how to get the data from table how to join some tables those things will be there that's it you need to know and that i will be explaining to you so these are the you know some very important questions okay how is the career with snowflake and uh, you know what is required to get job in snowflake okay why should we learn snowflake and uh, you know what is snowflake okay now even even before going to the snowflake we should know right what is that we are going to learn very some simple things okay don't worry about it these are all very 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 dead easy 
anything you learn you should learn about its architecture you know basic terms actually okay how what is the snowflake how it entered into market what it will do you already know it's a cloud data warehouse so its architecture we will read you know how to get started with snowflake means how do we get and how do we practice sql sessions okay and in, da in data warehousing what we will do is we load the data and unload the data so that is very important means basically in any in many people have this doubt what do we do as an engineers in the inside it if you are a data engineer or if you are in like snowflake redshift bigquery you load the data if you are a bi engineer for example one is a bi engineer bi engineer means they work on reporting tools like tableau power bi so you will retrieve the data that we already loaded means we have to load the data then they will use that data to generate some reports and all so like that so but the a snowflake is to load the data so we should be knowing you know load and unloading using snowflake okay there are different how to load huge volumes of data and how to unload huge volumes of data so these are all different services we use within snowflake okay how to load continuous data means as and when transaction get generated we should be loading into warehouse so all these things will be there for that we will be using different different uh, services like snow pipe and load and unload utilities so yeah these will be there and then yeah how to use snowflake okay snowflake interface okay and its architecture within that architecture we will be discussing what is these virtual warehouses and all and of course these are all you know different types of data structured data science. anyway they all will come actual course okay every day we get the data right so what type of data we handle what type of file formats we will have so all those things okay we will be dealing so that i will be telling and of course data sharing means um, yeah it means we need to share the data to some third party how do we do okay so these are all the features in every data warehouse supports but here in snowflake how do we share the data to third party who is not who don't have access to snowflake so all those things and uh, creating users okay uh, like uh, if you are a dba how to create users how to grant permissions how to create clusters so all those things and if you are an architect or again dba how to use you know billing how to check how much bill you got through snowflake okay how to reduce your storage cost or even cluster cost all those things we will be discussing okay so yeah of course we also will see installing snowflake on different environments like aws or azure and bigquery okay and how to get started so for this practice you don't need any money because this is trial versions company is providing okay so during the trial we are not charged anything if the trial comes for one month after that you can again you know recreate the account so again you will get free so no need to worry but i was with aws right so after one year trial version uh, you know it again charges okay but here it's not like that you can use unlimited time okay but every 30 days it will expire you have to again recreate your account so then these are main things very very important if you want to become excel in your career okay performance optimization these are all like solution architect level but once they ask in your interview if you tell then that's it you are the you know selected for sure performance optimization how do we do performance optimization in snowflake okay and how to migrate different different databases and data warehouses to snowflake migration nowadays everyone will ask this migration do you have experience in migration this is a standard question and default question also if you say no that's it you are not selected okay migration to snowflake okay have you do you have any exposure or experience you should say yes and of course interview interviews yeah once after you know basic things are completed once the course is completed i will take you you know mock interviews and there i will also will tell you how to answer basically that is how to present yourself in the interview okay if you present like that that's it okay you will be selected because i know what interviews will ex ex expect from you so that's where uh, i will tell you and uh, if something you don't know that also i will tell you 
for example you say that you know what type of clouds you used or do you have multi cloud experience you should say yes yeah i have working experience with snowflake and redshift then if you ask something about redshift yeah redshift is aws you know uh, cloud you know i have worked with snowflake installing on the aws platform and uh, used to get the data from s3 so all the, like that what is s3 s3 is a aws storage actually so like that whatever is required to through or to clear your interviews i'll be telling are doing the needful okay yeah of course the resume guidance and all will be there yeah i think now it's time for questions yeah now anybody has any questions can you please uh, krishna one question i have uh so like uh, like we have many data warehousing solutions right so like a redshift exam um i see that okay in this you can share the data to third party other than that uh, do we have any like if somebody asks like why can't redshift i mean why uh, why you why you are uh, uh, going with a snowflake because what's the main uh, future that doesn't have other uh, data warehousing solutions yeah is 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 yeah i got it in fact this is one of the you know one of the entry question okay so the question is why should we go for snowflake simple okay there are many other uh, cloud data yes. processes yes. right like uh, redshift and yeah. bigquery yeah. then why should we go for snowflake okay so that is the question they will ask in the interview the answer is okay if you go with redshift or if you go with azure synapse if you go with bigquery you have to use only their platform i will answer this in the more private side why should we use why should we go for snowflake while other cloud data warehouses exist okay snaps means azure data warehouse okay why should we go okay first one if we go with redshift bigquery or snowflake you have to i mean this synapse means azure you have to only use their services okay you cannot switch because once you are with uh, aws means you have to use aws only later if you have you know increase of cost or you want to change the platform you cannot change it once you migrate you see migration is not a simple thing you are investing a lot of money to switch to aws in around main and after that it's not that you can easily get out of it no it's not possible okay that's not possible if you use aws redshift or bigquery or azure okay you have spent lot of money and you spent okay and uh, later on in fact everywhere pricing issues will come right later you thought that you know some price will be work out for you later on you got some different pricing okay and which is going beyond your cost then you want to ship but you cannot ship so easily okay first switching to other clouds is not so easy okay switch because as i already said you invested some okay some some millions of dollars migrating from teradata to redshift now you found that you know redshift uh, cost is too high okay so then it's not so easy to again go back to some bigquery or some azure or some snowflake because again you have to spend money for development right yeah and second one snowflake works on 
all the public clouds it means it works on aws it works on azure and it works on gcp google cloud platform okay in fact this is the main reason why people go for snowflake where while configuring snowflake itself we have the option to configure whether you want to use snowflake on aws or snowflake on azure or snowflake on google and if you want you can switch any time if you want you can switch to other platform so easily by creating another virtual warehouse that's it very simple okay whenever you want at the same time itself same time within just fraction of minutes you can just switch to other platform this is in fact this much flexibility is not there with any cloud in fact this is the reason that made snowflake so you know adopted by other clients anytime you can go and anytime you can switch if you don't like aws platform you can move to azure platform or you can move to gcp platform okay and the price of snowflake or uh, not only snowflake any cloud data warehouse price will vary from region to region for example we are in asia pacific region and something like you know us east us west us north us south like that there are different different regions will be there and the price will be vary from region to region okay if you are only with the redshift or bigquery or azure you have to go with that cost you don't have option but in snowflake you can in you can choose to a different region where the low cost is there okay for example in us west okay in us west gcp is providing low cost okay for the cloud then you can have snowflake on gcp platform in us west region in us east aws is providing less cost then you can have snowflake on aws platform in us east like that you can have because pricing is you know different for each region so for cost optimization purpose you can switch to one cloud to another cloud in different different regions so basically what is this point says you can minimize your cost minimize your cost based on available clouds okay whatever cloud provides with least pricing you can go in that region on that platform okay for example now we are in india asia pacific okay aws is providing some 2 dollar azure is providing 2 dollar gcp providing 1.5 dollar then we can have snowflake installed on gcp itself or for example in us east aws is providing 5 dollar azure is providing 5 dollar gcp is, is providing 6 dollar let's say then you can have aws or azure because both are 5 and 5 then we have to see okay compute wise both are 5 then we have to see uh, storage cost storage cost aws is providing 5 dollar per 1 tb azure is providing 6 dollar per 1 tb then you will go with aws in your sist one so like that we have to see both compute cost and storage cost and uh, its infrastructure cost in that region because the costs are specific to region and uh, if you go with even to answer your question again if you go with only redshift or azure or bigquery you cannot switch to the other query i mean other uh, cloud that switching to the cloud is possible only with snowflake okay in fact that is the reason uh, snowflake became so famous because you can switch to the other service provider and which will in turn will reduce your cost so basically customers will expect two things one is cost other one is performance so by switching to the cl cloud platform or infrastructure you are minimizing the cost already 
so performance performance also snowflake is the best actually okay the best means for example if someone has uh, aws knowledge or redshift knowledge in redshift we have wlm okay workload management that means from wlm itself you are managing the you know all the queries means different different queries will be running like bi queries etl queries ad hoc queries qa queries and from wlm only you will be managing but all the load falls on the same cluster but but in snowflake it's not like that the workload management will be handled by creating different different virtual warehouses means you can create multiple clusters for bi users you can create one cluster for reporting users you can create another cluster okay for uh, ad hoc users or uh, testing users you can create another cluster and all will access the same data okay that is shared data this feature is actually not available with other there also you can create cluster but data is not shared okay here the data is shared so you can create multiple virtual warehouses even for bi users you can create one warehouse for development users you can create another warehouse like that even test users you can create another warehouse but all of them will share the same data that is loaded into snowflake so both cost and performance okay you can easily achieve uh, by the customers that is the reason people are going to snowflake okay uh that that is to answer your question okay uh, and uh, next in snowflake there are different different editions actually snowflake you know standard enterprise okay enterprise plus okay and um, vpc those things okay and uh, if the customers want more you know compli more complicated means you know more a vpc kind of thing definitely you know you will get more charge so we need to select what type of edition we want actually okay so for example see i will show edition yeah snowflake editions okay standard edition enterprise edition business critical editions and a virtual private cloud okay so and editions cost will differ see here standard comes with only $2 per hour enterprise some $3 per hour business critical $4 per hour okay virtual private cloud means you have they will customize the vpc for us okay so yeah different different features okay not every client needs business critical kind of thing Okay, normal clients like telecom and all or retail it's source, they they are are the standard itself. Or if they have more data and they want, you know, more um, backup kind of thing, they can go with enterprise. So like that. So considering all of these things, Snowflake is giving less cost and best performance. That is the reason uh, we should uh, choose uh, the Snowflake. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so self to, uh, to answer your question, Wani, because uh, Snowflake gives less cost and uh, more better performance, so uh, we can opt for Snowflake. Others also, I mean, they say that uh, we can give less cost, but there, if you want to switch, you cannot switch easily. That is another point. In Snowflake, control is in your hand. Okay, whenever you want to switch, you can switch and uh, performance controlling of different different workloads is very easy. In fact, uh, one of the common thing that became famous in the world I means outside hey, in Snowflake, we don't have to worry about performance. In fact, that's right, actually. Okay, but in for example, in Redshift and all you have to tune the query. You have to tune the query, but in Snowflake, it's not like that. Okay. So you can create a different different virtual warehouses and you can run those queries there itself. That's it. It will take care. You no need to do query optimization or even table design. Those are all not required. But in Redshift, 
you have to do table design like you know distribution styles and all you need to create sort keys and all but here uh, it's not like nothing like any distribution styles or anything okay so performance optimization everything will be taken care within the snowflake you know by increasing virtual warehouses or by creating different different workloads and again here if you know how snowflake works means for example there is a concept called micro partitions then even you can even even further improve the performance that's why we will be covering like how the architecture how the storage will be there how the micro partitions will work all these things of course that is very advanced okay uh, as a solution architect and all but even if you answer those questions in the interview that's it you will be selected for sure oh, one thing you just blindly follow like whatever i said and how we should be presenting in the interview that will make you success in the interview because you are just new you don't know actually okay so that's why yeah this question will be asked in every interview why should we go for snowflake okay while one is other clouds okay switching to a different cloud is not That's an easy practically it's impossible okay and uh, cost with snowflake and performance is very easy okay so so it is advised to proceed with uh, snowflake and whenever you want you can switch to other platform so no problem Yeah. Any other points uh, you have one in your mind? I think that's it, Krishna. So yeah, I'll I'll ask you if I have any. Thank okay. you, Krishna. Thanks for answering my questions. Yeah. Questions. Right now, uh, what is your warehouse? You are working on Tableau only, right? Okay. So. You will have different different warehouses. Uh, okay. Don't worry. One, I am asking, uh, which okay. warehouse you are using right now? You are working on Tableau only. Yeah, yeah, I am working on Tableau, but the backend is uh, uh, or uh, Postgres. Okay. We are using Postgres SQL DB, and yeah. the cloud is AWS cloud that we are using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what those people who work on BI tools, they will be working on different different uh, you know data warehouses. Okay, it may be like AWS Redshift yeah. or Google BigQuery or Snowflake or Teradata, so like that. All BI people will work on some of the data warehouse. Okay, so that's the reason they also need data warehouse knowledge. And any other questions, anyone? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can hear. Okay. You. Okay. Harika or Monika, do you have any questions? No, as of now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, we have decided to, uh, I mean, for a particular timing for the class. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, 
Yeah. What would yeah. be the timing? I mean, what is your comfortable timing? Uh, for me, the morning uh, six to eight. It is fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll have uh, seven o'clock. Or I mean. Yeah, I can say it's fine for me. Seven to eight is okay. Seven to eight. Yeah. Or you want six to seven? Seven to eight is seems to be better, Krishna. Durga is here. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Durga Prasad. How are you doing? Uh, I'm <laughs> fine, sir. I'm fine. Yeah. You see, yeah. yeah just to let uh, Harika and uh, Monka know, Durga Prasad is also ex student. Arna also ex student. You know, Mon, that uh, girl. Yeah. I mean, she left, right? She is also ex student. <laughs> These are all, you know, ex students yeah. only. Yeah, seven to eight will have Durga Prasad. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Krishna. Yeah. So in the evening or morning? Seven to eight. Morning uh, or no? Okay. Why very gay, tough to get up or what? No, no. If I'm night shift, it's not possible. Yeah. Anyway, every class will be recorded and you know uploaded in uh, YouTube. Okay. 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 Yeah, if we will have seventy-eight only or no? If required, uh, I will have you know separate sessions for you. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah, because he works in uh, shift actually. He works as a redshift DBA. Okay. So sometimes he goes in some shift, maybe two weeks once. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah that uh, we will no, see. No, uh, I mean, it is not just one uh, once. Uh, I mean. Just discuss and find us one time, which is very feasible for everyone. No, no. Actually, his shifts will actually change. Actually, uh, every two weeks. Okay. Okay. So yeah, he is an exception. Uh, don't worry about him. Uh, Harika and Monka and Zorka okay. Prasad for you. It works out seven to eight, right? Morning. Yeah, Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Monka, what about yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Arna only two weeks on night shift, uh, Arika. So no worries, okay. But whenever he has, uh, we'll connect separately. Otherwise, he is okay. With... Okay, because even yeah, if you sure. have evening sure. sessions, sure. also he he will miss uh, morning sessions uh, in case of you know he shift changes. That's right. Okay. So seven day eight will start from Monday. Uh, yes, Krishna. Yeah, morning Harika Monday is okay. Morning seven to eight. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sure. Then. Huh? See you on Monday. Okay. Yeah. Okay then. Huh? Take care. Yeah, Durga Prasad. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, Harika and Monday, you can drop. Yeah, Krishna. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Krishna, mm. uh, Durga here. Yeah, yeah. This uh, uh, thing is uh, got around 14 to 15 years of experience, total ID experience. Now, if I shift to Snowflake and do this course, uh, how how the things will be? Whether I should focus on uh, Amazon Redshift uh, DBA course or this uh, Snowflake training? Actually, my background is uh, previously it was Oracle with uh, Unix and uh, some knowledge in informatical ETL tool. Then I moved to uh, big data hype and you know, some uh, some knowledge in Spark and uh, started working on these tools. But I lost the job in last year. So uh, last six months I was uh, totally into some personal works and everything. That uh, got a gap of six to eight months. Uh, is it manageable or how Krishna? How should I plan the things? Oh, okay. You are ready to join immediately? I am ready to join immediately if I get any opportunity. Uh, yeah. Yeah, opportunities will get okay. But you never told me, bro. I was thinking you are working. Yeah. 
I mean, you never reached me also. Okay. Yeah. So earlier you are working on Oracle, right? Oracle. Hello. Hello. Virgil Prasad, can you hear me? Yes, 